This video will be discussing how to measure angles using a protractor, as well as talking about the angle addition postulate. If you are following along in class, please get a student note sheet from the front of the classroom, as well as a protractor from the student supplies. While watching this video, you may pause at any time to complete problems. I will also instruct you to pause at certain times as well to complete problems. You also can rewind or watch this at any time in or out of class. When measuring an angle with a protractor, it's important to note a couple few, uh, excuse me, a couple few features. When looking at the protractor, the bottom edge here, the straight edge, should always be lined up with one of the rays of the angle. It doesn't matter which one, as we'll see in a few examples coming forth. Another additional feature, the center here of your protractor should be lined up on the vertex. So right here at this cross, should line up perfectly with what I have listed there. So when I have that, I have two choices. I can either count the numbers on the inside and follow the pattern of the inside from 0 to 180, or I can go on the outside. Angles are always measured starting at 0, so in this particular case, I am measuring from the inside set of numbers. This particular angle you're looking at is 35 degrees. Please take a moment and pause this video and complete questions A, B, C, and D on your student note sheet, measuring those angles using your protractor. If you have questions, please feel free to let me know. However, once you have finished all four questions, press play and I will review them on this video. For question A, as for the other three, you will take your protractor and line up the straight edge so that it matches the length on, of the ray making sure the center of the protractor is also lined up at the vertex. In this particular case, I'm going to be using the outside set of numbers this time since this ray begins at zero. The measure for letter A should be 30 degrees. For question B, same deal. You're going to move your protractor on top of the vertex so that the center is lined up right there and the straight edge is lined up on the ray. Again, this time, since I'm measuring the angle from this ray around to this ray, I will use the inside set of numbers to get my match. And in this problem, I have between 120 and 130, and it looks to me right about 125 degrees for question B. For question C, you can use either this ray as your straight edge side or the top ray as your straight edge side. For this particular demo, I will use the side one. It doesn't matter if you use the other one, though. You should get the same answer that I get here. So revealing what I have here, we're going to use the inside set of numbers again. And I'm going to go with approximately somewhere between 80 and 90. I'm going to say approximately 86 degrees for question C. Finally, for question D, you take your protractor like we have in the previous examples and you set the vertex on the center and line up the protractor and this time I'm using this ray the ray that's on the left side as my measuring uh, as my measure for the straight edge I will use the outside set of numbers I will get approximately 170 degrees for the measure in part D now take a moment and pause this video again and complete the next couple constructions. You will be asked to construct an angle with a measure of 42, constructing a right angle, constructing an angle with a measure of 152 degrees, and once you have finished that, press play and I will review the problems on the video. For this set of questions, you will first draw a ray on your paper wherever you'd like. You will take your protractor and line up the end of the ray, the end point, which will eventually be your vertex with the center of your protractor, keeping an eye on your straight edge so that it lines up with the protractor. To measure 42 degrees, I will use the inside set of numbers since it starts at zero. This will take me to 40 right here. Here is 50. I will take the outside of my protractor and do the best that I can to estimate 42 degrees. That right there looks pretty good. Take your straight edge, could either be your protractor or a ruler, and draw a segment, or a ray I should say, extending from the vertex through your point and completing your 42 degree angle. 
When I read this problem, it does not give you a particular angle measurement. It asks you to construct a right angle. By definition, as we've reviewed in class, a right angle is an angle that measures 90 degrees. You also may be asked at times to construct an acute angle, which is an angle below or less than 90 degrees, and an obtuse angle, which is an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Like the previous example, you're going to first draw a ray somewhere on your paper. Next, taking your protractor and lining up the end of your ray, which will be your vertex, with the ray, and measuring 90 degrees exactly. So that will be right here, the top center of the protractor. Move your protractor out of the way and use a straight edge to complete the drawing. Sometimes you may see a drawing labeled. Instead of the 90 degrees labeled precisely, you may see a box used instead. This also means a right angle. Finally, constructing a measure of 152 degrees. This is an obtuse angle, and for this one I'll draw the ray in a different direction. So here I have it measuring this way. I will line up so that my vertex, my future vertex, is lined up on the center of the protractor. Because I had the ray go in the left direction, I now need to use the outside set of numbers to create my angle. So 152 degrees, 150 is right here. 155 is there. To your best approximation, make a mark for 152, pull the protractor away, and then complete your drawing. The other topic that will be covered in this video is what's called the angle addition postulate. This is very similar to what we talked about in class about the segment addition postulate. As you'll see, there are some characteristics that fall that are true in both of these postulates. In the drawing here, I have an example that personifies the angle addition postulate. If point D is on the interior of ABC, as is drawn in this figure, then the measure of ABC, this whole angle here, is going to be equal to the sum of angle ABD, which is this angle here that I'm highlighting, and also added with angle DBC, which is this one here. So again, very similar to the segment addition postulate, if you have a ray that splits an angle into two, maybe not necessarily congruent parts, but two parts nonetheless, the two little parts will eventually equal the larger angle itself. We're going to take a look at a few examples now. Looking at this first example, I have the measure of angle ABD, which is the entire angle here that I have highlighted as 10x plus 45. Angle ABC is listed as 6x minus 2. And finally, angle CBD is listed as 12x minus 1. If you would like to try this first example on your own, please pause it. If not, we will go over it in about a second here or two. Here I have the sketch from the Smart Notebook slides. ABD is 10x plus 45. So that's this entire angle right here. I'll draw a little arrow just to represent that, 10x plus 45. ABC is 6x minus 2, so that is this one right here. And finally, CBD is 12x minus 1. Now, based on the angle addition postulate we've discussed already, ABC and CBD, when added together, will give me the same measure total of A, B, and D. Since I know the measure of ABC to be 6x plus 2 and the measure of CBD to be 12x minus 1, when I add these two together, I will get the entire, set, or the entire angle of ABD. So 6x minus 2 plus 12x minus 1 will give me the entire segment or the entire angle of 10x plus 45. From here, this is now just a mathematical expression, an equation that we can solve by combining like terms, isolating the variable. 6x and 12x will give me 18x. Negative 2 and negative 1 is negative 3. Subtract the 10x to the other side of the equation. That would give me 8x. I will also add the 3 over here as well. That gives me 8x equals 48. Divide both sides by 8. My x value here is going to be 6. This question is asking me not to give the value of x, but to give the value of ABD, ABC, and CBD. So what I will do is take my 6 and plug it into each of these expressions. 
10 times 6 is 60. 60 plus 45 is 105 degrees. 6 times 6 is 36, and 36 minus 2 is 34 degrees. And finally, 6 times 12 is 72, and 72 minus 1 is 71 degrees. And there's my final solution. Our second example here looks at the measures of ABD, CBE, and ABE. And I would like you to find the angle measures of CBD and DBE. So here's a sketch of the drawing here. We're going to first look for angle DBE. And the reason I'm choosing that is I know that ABD, which is the remainder of that angle, is 92 degrees. So if I know these first two angles right here that I'll shade in, if those two pieces are 92 degrees, and this remaining piece, I don't know. However, I do know the entire angle is 111 degrees. So based on the angle addition postulate, if I subtract 92 from 111, I'll get the remaining part here, which is going to end up giving me 19 degrees as the measure of angle D, B, Lastly, I also know that CBE measures 74 degrees. I'll write that out here again since I sketched over it. I know that entire angle is 74 degrees. I also just found out that DBE is 19 degrees. So if I know this is 19 degrees and this whole angle is 74, I can find CBD by taking 19 away from 74. When I do that, I'm going to get 55 degrees as my angle measure for angle C, B, D. For this next example, I'm given this figure here as seen in your notes. Angle EHF is going to be 2X plus 10, and angle FHG is going to be X plus 18. Notice these two congruence marks here tell me that EHF and FHG are going to be congruent to one another, meaning they're equal to each other. Therefore, I can make the claim that 2X plus 10 is equal to x plus 18. When I solve this, we'll move x to the other side. That'll give me x here. If I subtract 10, it gives me x is equal to 8. That answers one part of my question. I also need to find the measure of EHG. That's the entire angle. If I plug 8 into EHF, I'll get 8 times 2 is 16, and 16 plus 10 is going to be 26 degrees as angle EHF. Now, because these two are congruent to one another, that also tells me that FHG is also 26. 26 plus 26 gives me the measure of EHG to be 52 degrees. This final example will not be shown on this video. I would like you to stop this video and complete this problem. Once you have finished, please raise your hand and let me know. I will check your answer and that completes this lesson. Please feel free to rewind to any portion of this video and also let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.